Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes. We come this evening on the pleading terms of new mercy. Yes. 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 Thanking you for this day's journey. Yes. Thank you, God. you watched over us and touched us this morning. Yes. With your finger of love, give us strength to get up out of our beds, put them out of our clothes. Give us a mind and a heart to come back to the house of prayer. Oh, thank you for your Holy Spirit and your word. We continue to pray for the sick and the afflicted. We pray for the names that are on our prayer list. You know their condition. You know their problem. Please, sir, we pray. Have mercy. You said call, Lord Jesus, and you would ask. Whatsoever we ask in your name, you would do it. Father God, we call on you in the name of Jesus. Yes. For mercy. mercy you are doctors who have never lost the case. Mercy. Look up on the name. Mercy. And those who are having problems, you know yes. what they're going yes. through. Yes. Some are having mental problems. Yes. Yes. Some are having chronic problems. Yes. Have mercy tonight. Yes. When you have mercy, sick men get well. When you have mercy, you guide the doctor's hand in his mind. We pray for the names that are on prayer. I will pray for it. You know that condition. Please, I have mercy. Your doctor will never lost it. Look upon this world's condition. From the white house to the poor house. Now, Lord, we need you. Oh, you are so welcome in this house. Thank you for holding us. In. Thank you for keeping us. In. Thank you for being our doctor, provider. Thank you for being our heart fixer, mind regulator. Thank you for being our economist. Oh, you, you fix things for us. We certainly uh, pay our bills. You, you step in. You interceded. We come saying thank you, sir. Didn't have anybody to talk to. You became our companion. Oh, bless your name. Bless your name. Thank you for being God in our life. Thank you for being King in our life. Thank you for being our Messiah and our Savior. You call us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Where would we be without you, Lord, tonight? We pray for the neighborhood. Touch the hearts before it's everlasting too late. Look upon that boy, that girl, that man, that woman who's walking the street, don't know you, a part of their sin. Look upon every pastor who's standing in John's shoes. We pray this prayer. And when this life journey comes to an end, we too, like others, must quit this warfare. Let me war no more to stick our swords in the sand of time. We pray that. Lord, just any place in your holy kingdom where every day will be sunny, sad, and sad. Yes. They all say amen. 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 I just gave up everything right. to follow. Yeah.
Esau, you've seen him do it. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. How I was so sick.
head go down and I can stand food, smell it, even smell it. I have to smell the food. So that Saturday, I got up feeling a little better. Yeah. And I went down and played Monopoly with the members. Do y'all remember that? Huh? Oh, I didn't get that to your woman.
the Lord. And the band said, it is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. And they seem, seemed, seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. When he, if he didn't love her, he sure would have a struggle on his hands. But the days went by. So pleasing to uh, Jacob. And it went by with ease. Now, if he just liked her, then he would probably change his mind. Love. An unusual love. You may be seated. My lady pastor, Reverend Dr. Carl Anderson. Preach this message and entitle this message as an unquote unusual love. Right. And he allures to several unusual historical love stories that has captivated the human hearts. Case in point, General Mark Anthony, the politician and the queen of Egypt, Cleopatra. Uh, though a host, though both individuals live, uh, individuals live, live came to a tragic end. It has been marked as one of the most unusual, inquisitive, ongoing, and very sensitive love rendezvous that still holds uh, sentimental values among playwrights of intellectual ages. This unusual love story is studied in classrooms, and I kind of tweet this now, all right, in classrooms from coast to coast about the priorities of what was most influential, meaning was its politics, or was it the passion of love. What weighs heavier? Of course, the human side would say the emotional side would weigh heavier than the political side. But I question that. Did it really? The unusual love affair was intertwined with political overtures, meaning an introduction to something more substantial, something undergirding, which was on both sides, meaning on Mark Anthony's side in Rome and on Queen Cleopatra's side in Egypt, right. which caused great political conflicts. Yeah. yeah, this is what, it reminds me, this story reminds me of King Solomon, how he tried to unite the world by marrying foreign women, which God told him not to do. And this was uh, he arranged these marriages to unite politically. Uh -huh. Yet, no doubt, he had some emotion yeah. within it. But uh, even 
even though they were married in 40 BC for the purpose that brought Egypt under Rome's control, Rome did not accept their marriage. But in Egypt, their marriage was accepted. Amen. History points Cleopatra as being extremely seductive, which captivated general polit uh, politician Mark Anthony, who crumbled to his knees in the political arena. And eventually, the end came for Pierce Cleopatra in suicide. And you still have the Mark Anthony's and the Cleopatra's of today. Seducing men to get their money so that they can go shopping. Set them up in an apartment. Understand, even in college now, you have uh, uh, called students to pay their bills. All clear patches and Mark Anthony are not dead. But she was raised. Talking about Cleopatra, she was raised to be politically seductive because at the age of 11, she was given in marriage to her younger half brother, Ptolemy, for apparently religious and political reasons, in which history states that he drowned, probably fighting in a war. Then she was given in marriage to her next younger half-brother for religious and political reasons, which he mysteriously died according to history of a disease. I'm in a danger, it is, you don't be lucky. I don't know. And I, I, my, well, in St. Louis, I knew this would be happening. Happen, this happened. One sister, she married, he went on. Married another one, he went on. I said, whoa. Let that alone. It is noted afterward that she became Julius Caesar's mistress for political alliances to bring Egypt under Rome's control. Of course, we all know that Julius Caesar's life came to an end when. He was betrayed by his political competitors in Rome, the Senate, for political reasons, led by Octavian, who became later known as Augustus, leader over Rome, standing in the wings next to Julius Caesar was general and political, uh, and his closest ally and friend was Mark Anthony, who seems like he took up the drum beat of Julius Caesar, his friend politically, and loved wise to bring about a, 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 a democratic and republic Rome. The unusual pair about uh, this unusual tragic love was rooted in political maneuvering. Right. Became 
Mark, because Mark Anthony himself was 20 years older than Cleopatra. Yet, he eyed her, or possibly they eyed one another, while Queen Cleopatra was being Julius Caesar's mistress. Yes. Now you talk about drama. <laughs> their intimacy, their intimacy with one another trumped their aspirations of the political arena to the point where they chose their love involvement with one another over the welfare of their nation or empire. Right. Instead of unifying Rome and Egypt, their heated love affair caused political conflict. Right. You see, Mark Anthony had four previous wives before entertaining Cleopatra. And one of his wives was the sister of Octavian, whose name was Octavius, who was Mark Anthony's bitterest enemy. Uh, Octavian later became the next ruler of Rome. But Octavian was not going to allow, he was determined to stamp out Mark Anthony and Cleopatra's scheme to empower themselves over Rome and Egypt. Now, the question that uh, I pose tonight uh, is, are these, these unusual love affairs Still happening today? The answer is yes. We see these unusual love affairs in sports, among sports uh, characters. We see these unusual love affairs in Hollywood, where actors and actresses marry and remarry for fame and fortune and for positions and movie of uh, and et cetera positions and for allowances to gain parts in certain movies. We, we have seen this among sports stars, how some of our professional baseball and football and golf and basketball and et cetera, uh, sports stars have intermarried relationships. Yes. And we go on and on and on. And we wonder why. Yes. Why? Yes. People marry who they want to marry. Yes. It, 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 it seems like history repeats itself. Yes. We have seen in the underworld how women and men in what they call these movies of mafia families became, become allies in unusual love affairs, but one kills the other for power and position. That's what I saw in the movie. Uh, my late pastor, uh, Reverend Dr. C. Janison, listed three ongoing reasons for unusual love which he uh, mentioned possessive and contemplative and benevolent. It seems like when the Greeks used these terminologies to define love affair, tragedy is always at the end of the line. Because without agape love, Hesed, H-E-S-E-D. Yeah. Hesed, love. And I'm preaching some of this. Okay. It will always come to a tragic end. Yeah. An end and uh, sometimes it's a triangular tragic end. Yeah. Let's 
let's turn our attention to yes. Jacob and Rachel just for a few minutes here. Oh, yeah. And I'll go back with the same elements of being possessive, contemplative, and benevolent. Their love is unusual, even though it had become uh, non-political, because God was setting this up. God set their love up because he had a plan. See, God's plan trumped all of our plans. Amen. Amen. Mark Anthony, going back to Cleopatra, unusual love affair, possessive mean, meaning, self-serving. Mm -hmm. Or was their love affair contemplative, meaning they got to know one another, then they became madly in love. Uh -huh. Or was it benevolent? Was it basically good for both countries and for the welfare of the people? Does this unusual love need to be elevated to the height of being a classic in a kind of heroic way? History states that Cleopatra seduced Mark Anthony yes. and they were married in once again, 40 B.C. Mm -hmm. The flames of Cleopatra's seduction went much further in their intimate love affair. Mm -hmm. So much so until some 1,800 years later, a great writer was captivated by their unusual love that flamed their uh, era in which the great William Shakespeare, Shakespeare's love story right. play was probably performed first about 1607 at the uh, Black Friars Theater or Globe Theater by the King's Men. Even though we use that name loosely, Cleopatra, the seductive depth of her personality yes. and overwhelming charm of Mark Anthony is really hidden in history and is still played out today on the stages of life everywhere yes. for convenience sake. Yes. Was their love benevolent? Where they were willing passionately to unite for the sake that Egypt would not be pillaged and destroyed by Rome, and that Rome uh, would have a gateway to the higher cultures and, mis and mysteries of the Egyptians, uh, intellect of pyramids, of the arts, and building structures, and science and medicine, yes. and exposed to writing, and exposed to arts, mm -hmm. and the mysteries of medicine, or was, uh, or was it uh, contemplated where they had seen one another yes. in court when she was with Julius Caesar as being his mistress? Yes. Did it eventually end where they became possessive, yes. where one could not live without the other because their benevolent and contemplated love no longer fortified their dreams. From all indications, it appears that even though they were intimately involved, what overshadowed their love was the politics of failure. When they found out that Octavian, Augustus, was not going to allow Mark Anthony and Cleopatra 
action to become in control by manipulating Egypt and Rome under their unusual love seduction. Yes, it is quite evident that uh, in Rome, uh, Octavian would not allow this to happen. All right. We have this mystery right now where uh, many look at uh, Cleopatra as a mystery person, yeah. even today, yeah. because of her mysterious personality. Yeah. Now, to make a long story short, we know the story of how they tragically end their life. Yeah. And following some years later, we find in the Shakespearean theater of another couple that was madly in love. And to be honest with you, they were disobedient. But they were madly in love. It's amazing how Hollywood played tragic up to be a classic when it's really detrimental to a, what they call love. Because love does not end like that. Right. Amen. Amen. Love does not end in suicide. No. Because when you got true love, yes. I'm talking about the love of God, yes. you don't commit suicide. Yes. Amen. When you have the right love, yes. you don't seduce anybody. Yes. You just automatically love. Yes. With a passion yeah, 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 right. that is not uh, seductive. Right. You don't have to put on lipstick, powder, right. and paint. Right. And you don't have to throw yourself around. Right. You just automatically uh, uh, be compatible yeah. Yeah. where you have this, uh, this feeling and emotion yeah. where you can get along. Yeah. Now, it, it's, I'm coming to a close right. where. Uh, Rachel and Jacob. Jacob was not seduced no. by Rachel. No. It was just that God put love in his heart. Amen. Amen. And they did it all. Amen. To the point where God set this up. So many get married thinking they're in love, but they're really in lust. Yeah. Right. The, the, the love of God when he's guiding you uh -huh. will work out. Yeah. Yes, it will. Yeah. And you'll be productive yeah. in your relationship. Yeah. yeah, and you'll be compatible. Yeah. Yeah. And Jacob did not mind yeah. working seven more years uh -huh. for the one that he loved. You see, God got a way to let you know yeah. Yeah. by sign yeah. that this is the right person. Yeah. Uh, you see, some are too quick because they look and they say this is the one because of their shape. Uh, some uh, get carried away with the curly hair. Some get carried away with the smooth talk and the hip walk and the swinging of the, you know, some get carried away. And they don't know what they're being carried away with. Because when they get together, it's a whole different ship. It's not the ship of time either. While they line themselves down at the courtyard, in the line with everybody else, for our divorce papers. You see, God has a way uh, to put one together. Yes. I remember a young man come to me some years ago, 
and he tried to convince me that the woman that he was with was the right one. And I told him, it won't work because you are of a different faith. Oh, yes it will, Reverend. So I just opened my Bible and read, read it. But time proves me right. Love is compatible. Paul says, be compatible. You can't bury somebody outside the church and think you're going to convert him or her. Get them saved first. Be compatible. Then it won't be contemplated. Oh, I done told you now. When I started out, that some get this word love confused. The love of God in your heart will lead you if you listen to the right one. What's from the heart reaches the heart. God got a way to let you know yes. that this person is not right. right. Yes, that's right. That's true. Amen. Yes. I, I admire one of my track girls. She had to call her wedding off. You start adding up the pluses and minuses. All right. All right. When you start getting more minuses than make positive, right. Right. it's time to get step. Right. I try to tell some, I say, don't, wait a minute. Yeah. If, you don't, if you don't feel this right, don't do it. Right. Don't come in my office shocking me. <laughs> uh, we we really get married. What? Okay. okay. <laughs> You see, some can't wait. And then when they get together, they can't stand one another. Because one is mature, another one's immature. Not compatible. You got the Mark Anthony's and the Claire Patches of today. Yeah. They call them in in the uh, sports world in the world gold diggers. Yes. Yeah. You can't have they 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 plan out the men that they have. You got some old silly women. I mean, you know, young, old, young and old. All they want is somebody in bridges. Whatever you have, toss them, those you have. All they want is just somebody to talk to. I'm lonely. How do I just need somebody to talk to? You got the greatest man with you. Yes. Well, I know I talk to Jesus all the time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. What you know what they're really saying? You know what they're really saying? I really want to be miserable. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm not satisfied being lonely. And no, no problem. I, I really want to be with somebody. I want to be with somebody. I don't care. I just. I want to be miserable. I want to have arguments. I don't curse, but I'm going to start cursing. I'm going to cuss him out. He's going to cuss me out. That's in the way to do it. I'm in bed tonight, but one eye open. You don't know what she's going to do. She don't know what. Old folks used to talk about grits. Grits. <laughs> grits. <laughs> What kind of love is that? 
Sometimes we get love and lust mixed up. To the point where the person that you are staying with is getting the milk, but not getting the love. There you are giving both.
they're not even satisfied with themselves. They go in the mirror, they look, they look, and they, they sit and stand in the mirror, just criticize themselves. How stupid can you be? God gave you that nose. God made your eyes. God made your ears. You don't know you have those faculties. And then you are standing there criticizing what the lover of your soul gave Suppose everybody was, was at one color. God is a variety of God. Amen. Different shapes, different sizes. You better be thankful for who you are. Amen. Some of all life been upset because they look a certain way. So what if you pigeon toe? You walk. Yeah. Walk good. You know, give me closer. Go ahead and walk. God made you. Go ahead and soul made you. God is good. Yes, he is. I'm going to close with this message. And I knew your love died on the cross. Yes, he Unusual love got up on the third day while we're just a person. Unusual love is with you all the time. You yeah. love yeah. suffering. Yeah. Do you remember when you were out there doing nasty things? Yeah. When you were doing the wrong things? Yeah. Unusual love suffered. Yeah. We still love you. Yeah. We want you out of darkness. Yeah. And you are not all the time. That's the unusual love. Greater yeah. yeah. love has no man than this. Yeah. Yeah. When we was out there boogalooing, uh -huh. doing what we weren't supposed to do, yeah. he still protected us. Yeah. Yeah. He called us out of darkness yeah. into his marvelous life. Yeah. Yeah. And some, some still haven't realized it. They're still obstinate. They're still trying to do their way uh -huh. and do his way. Uh -huh. He ain't going to go for that. No. He said, I'm the Lord thy God, yeah. and I'm a jealous God. Yeah. 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 I will trust in the Lord. I will trust.